Thanks very much, Paul. Um, I'll be quite quick. Basically, in, in 2008, we got funding from the EPA, as I've already mentioned, which um, the aim of the funding was to work with design teams to see could we prevent or design out waste. Now, unfortunately, that's when the economic crash happened, so it was quite difficult to get in with a lot of design teams. So we're very lucky that Paul and Scott Tanner Walkers um, let us have access to their office for about 18 months, I think the, the placement was, and they were working at the time on the design of the Human Biology Building. So our aim was to see how could we integrate waste reduction measures during the actual design. So what we did, we came up with a list of sort of recommendations. As Paul mentioned already, first thing to do was to carry out an external <coughs> visual pre-demolition audit, which we produced a report for that, to identify any materials that could be reused or recycled, or could the parts of the building be deconstructed, or were there hazardous materials, which there are some asbestos uh, panels there and things like that, that would need a specialist to remove it. Um, then we decided to set some targets for the project, and it would be quite unusual to have these in, in the design brief or the design phase, 90% um, diversion from landfill. And then we decided to go quite specific to looking at the demolition phase or the enabling works and also the construction phase, so the targets are set out there. And we also used BREAM as a guideline for actually identifying the meters cube per meter squared or tonnage target. So what we found, these found themselves being in the architectural specification and the design brief, and they went to follow through then to the main contractor when they won the bid, when BAM won the bid, and then as part of their site waste management plan, they had to go about trying to achieve these targets. Also, we prepared a, a template for a design phase construction demolition waste management plan and highlighted issues again like supplier take back schemes, subcontractor management, and so on. And the idea there was not to say, well, to the main contractor, go ahead and solve all these issues. What we wanted to have is to have already have a document that we could hand to a main contractor and to say, and subcontractors, and say, well, here is what we're thinking about doing, and have a discussion about that. Some other issues that ended up in the architecture space through Scott Town and Walker's own sort of initiatives as well, and things that we recommended was having recycled content percentages, and some off-site construction elements, reduction in the basement, depth, and deconstruction of some elements as well. So they are also contained in the architectural specification. It was interesting for us to sort of get beyond maybe the stereotypes of, of sort of architectural profession and to say for every recommendation we would have with Paul and his team in the Galway office, they would give us a list of reasons why that may or may not work. So there was quite a lot of depth to their thinking. It's not that they just ignored waste. We were focusing on one thing, but they had a whole host of other design strategies and issues to think about. So we incorporated as much as we could. And the result of this part of the project, Jan is going to present another part in, in, in a few minutes, is that you might see them outside there are the EPA fact sheets and tools. Basically, we decided to develop with agreement with um, Scott Town and Walkers, and also we did the construction phase of the Matter Hospital with John Sisk in Dublin as well. We took those two case studies and decided to develop a sort of toolkit for best practice looking at different principles and strategies of preventing and designing out waste. So are, those are free to take. They're outside on various issues. There's also a report go with that on the EPA website as well. So that was the design phase interventions. What I'd like to do now is introduce Brian Holmes, project manager with farm contractors, to talk about some of the construction challenges that they currently face.